Hello everybody, welcome to another Unity game development video. It's been a while since I've made one of these, and um, you know, with COVID going on, a bunch of crazy stuff, work, and all that, um, I haven't been able to get around to making another video, but I have still been working on my game, and I have a lot to show you. Uh, I've got about three videos worth of stuff to show, but for now I'm just gonna focus specifically on the um, kind of prototype of an enemy character that I have working in my game. Um, in case anyone doesn't know who's watching this, which is very likely because I don't have any followers or subscribers or anything, um, what I'm working on here is a 3D platformer for Unity um, called Brain Eyed. And basically you play a dog with psychic abilities and those abilities progress as you get something called Brain Chow, which is kind of like this dog food that keeps giving you more ESP abilities um, and one of the kind of enemies that would be in the game would be a dog catcher character as you start off in like the beginning town area um, and as you can see right here in the scene view I've kind of started uh, making something like that this is something that I fully modeled in blender and I like how it's turning out so far it looks really good um, Obviously, it's going to be more detailed than this, and it's going to be a little more interesting than this generic humanoid shape, but I did model and fully animate the character in Blender. And if we look at it, if I just lock the focus to that character with Shift-F, um, oh yeah, I forgot it's maximized, so I guess we don't really have to do that. So, it's going to show anyway. Um, this is my game in third person. You can switch to first person. We're going to switch in first person so you have a better look at the character. Um, the AI currently built into it works under a view distance kind of thing. Right now, it is tracking me with a look at uh, function. But that's going to change to once, um, once you've been noticed, the character will start looking at you. But there's a view distance that once I get close enough to it, it'll start heading towards me. And we'll go deeper into the kind of AI that's controlling this character. So now it's starting to walk towards me with the walking animation. And then strafing around me. It moves in for an attack. Back out. Uh, gonna stand still for this attack. Then moving to the other direction. And what determines whether or not... Um, the character's going to strafe left or right or stand still for the next kind of um, attack thing. It's just a coroutine that's uh, randomizing a float or an integer, and that's uh, determining whether or not it's going to move a certain direction or move at all. So we can look into that further if I just get off of here. And um, when it's attacking me there, it's actually attacking me. I can't move right now. Um, the way I've set it up is that my character has 5 health and um, it's losing 1 health every time that net actually hits it. And I'll go further into that after I look more at the character. So if we go to the enemy, um, I have it in this kind of folder, everything that the enemy needs. And this driver here that's controlling the character has pretty much everything that we need to talk about. So if we just look at everything in the inspector, we need the character model. There's an offset for the character model. I haven't quite figured out what's with Blender and importing models because sometimes it's just really weird. Like the origin is very, very low on this character. Or not very low, but it's offset by 1.1 units for some reason. When I imported it, even though the origin was directly in the center of the character's pelvis when I imported it, I'm not sure why it moved. Um, the move destination, which is the um, destination of the nav mesh agent. And speaking of the nav mesh agent, here it is, and it's grabbing that at start. Um, current behavior idle, so this is an enum. It has several behaviors, idle, patrol, alert, travel, orbit, attack, and flee. And right now, idle, um, travel, orbit, and attack are the only ones that are actually um, finished, well not finished, but uh, at a point where I can show them to you. And the target character, that's established as soon as we've entered that view space. Um, view distance, I've already explained that. When we're within a certain distance of the character, it'll start uh, trying to chase us down. Orbit distance is um, 
the distance in which that character is trying to strafe around us when it was uh, attacking you saw that it was moving left and right around us I can affect that I can get it in closer or further pivot is an object that um I'll just show it off actually if I stop maximizing on play and we are going to go to the pivot which is right here if I focus on it it is um, pretty much stationary for here, but it will update as soon as the character is close enough to start doing that orbit function. See, now it's directly on my body. Uh, it's not rotating now because it's determined not to strafe, but you can see now that it is rotating because the character is strafing around me. There we go, now it's rotating in that direction. And the orbit right here is the pretty much a an empty object in which the enemy is trying to move to. Whereas that the move destination is pretty much lurping to that position. So here's the orbit, and you see that it's slowly moving around, and the nav mesh agent is trying to access that. And the interesting about that the thing about that is the way I've set it up is that um, if I come at the character in a different angle um, it won't try and just position that orbit um, object directly in front of me it's positioning it towards the enemy character and then it's rotating so um, it's a little more believable it won't go to like um, a preset position before starting its orbit so if I go over here to the left it'll start the orbit as soon as it comes to me instead of directly in front See, stops there and then starts orbiting left. So even if I came from the complete opposite direction from it, it would start the orbit as soon as it gets close to me. Um, let's see. Uh, just a boolean entered the orbit. Um, I don't remember exactly what that's set for. I think it's set that... Um, so how I determined where to start the rotation, um, it just runs for like a single frame a look at function to establish where the character is in relation to the actual player and then it doesn't run that any longer so that bool is just there to set that position set itself as false so that it doesn't do that anymore um, orbit speed that's just how quickly the orbit object is rotating around it because it's actually a child object of the pivot so orbit speed is actually determining how quickly the pivot rotates um, let's see here, debug attack, that's just, when I was using a, cla uh, what is it called, capsule object instead of the actual player model, it would turn red when it attacked, so it was an easy way to debug if the attack script was working. Attack rate is how often the character is attacking. Attack duration is, um, I believe the small amount of time in which the character will, um, the enemy character will stop before the attack, so it's kind of like a delay before it. And the attack speed is how quickly the character is moving from that orbit position to the attack position. And we have an animator attached because this is an animated character. So if I jump into the script, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but let's just go to the very top and I'll run through it all. Uh, I just described all of these, so um, we don't really know anything about that. There's a few private things, uh, attack ready. I don't think that's actually used. Uh, target locked, that's important. I'll explain it when we get to it. Target position, that's important. I'll also explain that, so let's just keep going. Um, at the beginning, we're going to grab the agent. Um, if the agent is null, then it will tell us that it's uh, missing. The behavior is automatically set to idle because um, at the beginning there are no enemies detected. Uh, we have the material that's not important because that's for that debug uh, red material I was telling you about earlier. And the agent speed is initialized as whatever the um, speed is on the actual nav mesh uh, agent. So in the update function we're running a move to destination uh, function and it's using a find target function there so we're moving to the destination of the target that we're going to find and then move model this is specifically for animating 
So in the move to destination uh, function, and I'll probably make these a little more, um, what's it called, more um, efficient. And it's actually not super inefficient right now, but there are more places where I can put logical operators that will determine whether or not parts of the code that don't need to be running aren't running. Um, but I'll get around to that eventually. It's not super inefficient right now. Um, so in the move destination function, we start off with a vector three dest, which is the destination, and that is set to the target um, thing, the target character, and that's essentially the game object that's being fed into this function. So there's another function being fed into this one, and that's being placed into the code here, and we're moving to that object. Um, I don't know how good this is. Yeah, this is definitely going to have to be changed at some point. The find target function currently just returns um, an object of type player move. So just finding the only object that has that player move script. And that's kind of silly, but not really because I'm just testing it right now. Um, but ideally, what I'm going to do is set this up to where um, the character is a view cone of some sort and it just finds the character when they are visibly in front of them. Um, but right now, just for testing purposes, it automatically finds the character. Okay, and for the function that the um, target is being fed into, it's finding that down here and then running it through. The destination is being set to that target object that we found with the find object of type. And the target character is equal to the target. Um, if the distance of the character to the target is greater than the view distance. So if it's not within that view distance in which the character can be seen, um, this patrol behavior is being ran. There's not currently any code um, controlling this patrol behavior, but essentially the enemy would wander generally aimlessly until um, activated. And then uh, if else, if the distance is less than this or greater than this orbit distance but less than this view distance so if it's further away than from the character that it's not within the point where the character would orbit the player but it is within the view distance and the current behavior is set to travel in which the character is going to travel to that destination um, this bull is setting it to walk uh, the destination is set and entered orbit is true so that enter orbit um, bool is essentially down here. If I find it, uh, enter orbit, the pivot dot transform that look at. So yes, essentially what I was saying earlier is that it is grabbing um, the angle in which it has to face the, what's it called, character, the player, the pivot is and it is determining where the character should start rotating from there. And if we go back up, let's see. So if that's not happening, the animation is set to false. And everything with here, if it's not within that um, orbit distance, or it is within that orbit distance actually now, um, then the agent is stopped and it, the path is reset. So it's essentially grabbing a new destination is starting this coroutine which is the circle target which we'll explain down here and what that's going to do is it's going to make the character change its target to the orbit uh, game object and it's going to orbit the character so this is actually um, uh, an enumerator circle target takes a target um, the walking is set to false so that's just telling the animator to start doing these other animations which are going to be the strafe ones and those are going to be controlled by, um, I believe, an integer. If a random number has not been generated, then we're generating a random number. And that's how we're getting whether or not the character is going to strafe left or right. The pivot.transform position equals the target character that transform position. And then the orbit.transform position is being set to the pivot position plus the pivot.transform.forward times the orbit distance minus one. So essentially, the um, orbit is being set to the position of the pivot plus the offset that we establish uh, with the orbit distance. And then um, that is a child object of the um, pivot. So it's actually going to retain that position as it rotates. If the behavior is not set to attack, 
then the attack timer starts. And the attack timer is just pretty much going to determine how often the character attacks. Um, it's um, steadily increasing um, a float using time not delta time, and it is cross-referencing that against the what is it called? Um, attack rate. Uh, so the pivot dot transform now look at the characters looking at the player, and that's what I was talking about earlier, where it establishes it so it can rotate from any point. And this is the reason we need it to be enumerated right here is this do while function because it'll um, keep it in here and not run any of the code outside until it is finished. So strafe active is set to true. The attack timer is being iterated upon by time not delta time and the behavior is set to orbit. So the agent destination is set to the orbit position and um, the pivot is starting to rotate and this random integer right here is what we established earlier with um, generating it right here. So if it is a one, it'll rotate right. If it is a negative one, it'll rotate left. If it generates a zero, it'll stand in the same position. So it kind of adds some kind of variety to the enemy AI. Um, the anim dot set integer strafe to ran. So there we go. Um, basically the logic in the animator is seeing the integer and it's determining if the integer is positive and the character is strafing right, then it'll run the right animation. If it's negative, then it'll run the um, uh, strafe left animation. And if it is a zero, then it won't run any animation or run the idle one where it's kind of just standing in place. Um, and it returns null, so it's waiting for all this to happen and for this condition to stop. There's a lot of conditions here to make sure that the um, the strafe behavior is working properly. Um, and after that's finished, it'll stop strafing. The number generation, the bool controlling that will be set to false so that next time we go into this behavior, it'll randomly uh, generate another number. And the attack coroutine is started. The timer is reset so that this can all happen properly again. Enter orbit is set to true so that we can realign it next time it enters its orbit. Um, here is the attack. Uh, enumerator. The current behavior is set to attack. The agent is stopped. So it has a new destination. The destination is set to the character. Or not quite yet. Actually, the destination is going to set to where the character was in the moment when the coroutine began. So I'll explain that in a second. Um, so this debug attack thing, you don't have to worry about that. But uh, I'm actually going to get rid of that for now because we don't need that running. Um, it waits for 0.2 seconds. Uh, target lock is set to false, so that locked target bool is actually set so that it is determining the position of the player until that is set to true. And when that is set to true, then it will just get that position where the player was at, and if that happens to be where the player is, it'll get a successful strike. Um, else the kind of the player will dodge it, then the enemy will attack where the player was, kind of creating that well-known attack scenario that would happen in a 3D platformer. Or in a lot of games, actually. Some first-person shooters have melee characters, so that makes sense, too. Um, target position is what we're going to find with that target locked uh, thing. It's currently set to vector 3.0. Um, it's set to the character's position. Target locked is true, so we're no longer to run this code, so that uh, vector 3 is just going to remain what it was set to. Uh, the agent speed is set to the attack speed, so the character is going to move faster than it normally would when it's strafing or just normally moving. It's going to move much faster to get to the character and perform that attack. The animation is going to play, and then it is going to wait till that's over, and then it's going to return back to the, uh, what's it called? Orbit behavior. So it's going to run that attack, it's going to do all that, and then it's going to just start orbiting again. And then... Let's see what's going on here. This is just essentially returning the... While the character's animation is playing, it's just going to return it back to that position. And then... This is unimportant again. This is that part of the material thing that I'm getting rid of. 
and it's set back to the orbit, and then it pretty much runs it all over again. Uh, the random direction is right here. I don't know if that's really... Yeah, I guess that's ran inside the randomization thing, yeah. Rand equals random direction, okay, so that is used. Um, and this move model function just moves uh, the character model, so it's pretty much keeping it in the place of the um, character. And um, if the attack animation is being set, then the character is looking at the um, target uh, position, not the actual position of the enemy, but the um, where the position of it, where it thought it was going to attack it was. So it's attacking where the character was in that moment. And that's basically it. And um, I think it's a pretty convincing um, little bit of enemy interaction. So if I go into the actual character, armature, root, where is this in the weapon? Yeah, here's the hitbox you can see right there. And if the hitbox hits the character, then it's going to run a function that decreases um, the health. So if I go to the actual player, and oh, in the player manager right here, we can see the HP. HP is set to the max at the start. And then if I am hit by the enemy, it should go down. Down to four. Hit again, down to three. But I can dodge those attacks. See, didn't lose any health. And that's good. So, um... That's about it for now. I just thought that was an interesting bit of game development that I put together. Didn't really watch any tutorials or anything, and I try not to for a lot of the stuff that I do um, because I like the learning experience. Or at least I like to try things out myself before looking things up because I feel like you learn a lot more that way. Um, if you liked the video, uh, thanks for watching. If this is something that you'd like to see more of in the future, please follow me on here and on my Twitter at um, LowResDev. And uh, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.